This week we're trying to tackle overhead cabinets. Here, here, here and here. So stay tuned to see how we get on. The plan is to build a little mini frame before we put the kind of fronting pieces on, the two side pieces and one in the middle which will act as our cupboard door. So we've just cut three pieces there and they're going to go up roughly like this. So the door's going to hinge on this side here and open that way. These aren't attached yet, but we'll get a few angle brackets in the bottom, attach these on the sides and probably screw it into the ceiling as well, just for extra good measure. Cut the first piece here, so we'll just fit that up there. And then yeah, we'll just screw it in down the bottom, and screw it into this, and that should work. The right hand piece is in, it's looking quite good so far, I think. The door is going kind of between that support and that spot over there. And then for this left hand side piece, the plan has to come up that corner and come under this beam and just up on this side of the beam. And that's because we're going to have more overhead cabinets that side of the beam underneath here. So along there, under the beam, up into there, door there. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, job done. Aisha's doing some sanding and getting ready to do the door. As it turns out, the angles you're dealing with when doing overhead cabinets are super awkward, who would have guessed? So the door did give us a bit of trouble to get it fitted, but as you can see we got it on eventually with the hinges on and the handle on and even a roller catch to hopefully keep it closed while we're driving. We moved on to the first real overhead cabinet which is the one above our bench. We're going to build all of our cabinets in roughly the same way by basically putting up a frame first. As the frame is going to be bearing the majority of the weight we want to make it nice and strong so we're building it out of slightly thicker timber battens which we are pocket hauling together for strength. We're going to try and position this first batten about 12 mil above that little lip you can see. So hopefully our 12 mil bottom will slide perfectly along and fit into place. Just knocked up the first frame with some pocket holes which you can probably see underneath. So then when we put our plywood on the bottom and screw it in, obviously those pocket holes will be hidden. So now I just need to do some vertical supports up the sides and in the middle so that when the doors close they have something to close into. Got finished building the frame now so we've got the vertical supports and the top support so we're then going to have this section not door and then a door, a door and not door again. Now for the very awkward bit of trying to get it into place. The frame is in, we can do that and the whole van shakes so hopefully that's not coming off the wall anytime soon so that's good. So I reckon it's time for lunch. After lunch we got started cutting and fitting that bottom piece which with a bit of encouragement actually fit pretty well to the plan. We have a bottom. <laughs> so that we can have two separate cupboards we're going to put a divider in between them. And I have just such a divider here. So we'll get that screwed in. Overhead cupboards coming along nicely. Got the base on, got a divider in the middle, and I put these two side pieces on. And then we're going to have two doors which will shut together into the middle. So let's go cut them now. These hinges were such a pain to attach, particularly above our heads. They didn't come with any fitting instructions. The hinges we've got are these ones. You can see they've got some kind of wider holes that let you put a screw in and adjust it. So that's pretty much how we managed to fit them. I believe they're known as easy fit hinges, though uh, how easy they are to fit is a bit debatable. Still, we did manage to get them on in the end. Just some handles and some roller catches, and I think we're all done here. After popping on some handles and the roller catches, that was our first real overhead cabinet done. So moving on to the next ones, we're tackling the one above our sliding door next. Now essentially we're doing this in a very similar way. We're building a frame that's going to hold the bulk of the weight, which we then attach to the van and we'll be fronting that with plywood. 
However, we have an additional problem with this one because this is where the beam for our hangboard sits, which if you've seen our previous video, you can see how we've mounted it there. But we didn't want all the space behind it to just be dead space. So we've turned half of it into a shelf accessed from the outside and a small part of it into a cupboard for our kitchen. As awkward as the beam is to work around, it did give us something super strong and stable to attach these cabinets into. So, pros and cons. This is what the first piece is going to look like underneath. So we'll just go around, screw that in, secure that down. Make sure we've left a little hole here. Hopefully you can see that for the light that's going to go under here. We've just built this base out of 6mm poplar ply. So it's very light, fairly thin, but should still hold some weight. A quick test and it works. Got the second piece of the base up behind me. So if we just spin you round. And we've got this channel that we've routed out under here, which is where our LED strip will sit in. And that joint along there hopefully won't be too visible. We might wood fill it or something. Alright. No more truth. Nope, doesn't fit. Why don't you fit? Aha. For the kitchen area, we're using slightly different handles. You can see the silver bow metal handles that we've got. They require two bolts in through the back. So we just drill a hole all the way through the wood in the correct place and then screw that bolt into the handle on the other side. Hopefully you can see in here where we put the light in. <laughs> There is a lot of cables, so I've just cut this rectangle out of some of our leftover plywood and that's just going to sit on there just to cover up those cables. So yeah, that's how we're going to deal with that. The last thing we have to do on this cabinet is a little bit of routing and that's because it's easier to flush trim route it at the end, especially as nothing in the van is quite square. Absolutely covered in sawdust. We've popped the hangboard into place and we're done. Up next, we're gonna do the final set of overhead covers, which is going above these back doors where the bed's gonna go. Um, we're thinking we're not gonna bring them out too far because we don't wanna cut too much into the head height for the bed area. Um, but we're just gonna figure out roughly, we're thinking maybe here, we're gonna have a look. For the overhead cupboards behind the bed area, we're gonna build another frame. So this is the first piece here. And so it's been cut at an angle going front to back of the van and an angle going top down. So it's kind of like skewed off. So that means it fits that curve slightly better and it fits the curve in at the back slightly better. So we've got this piece here. We're gonna have another piece, much the same running about from there all the way across and over to there. We'll then obviously attach those two together and then build another top section of the frame, just like we did for the other cupboards, and that will be where the doors can close into and open from, and that's where the hinges will be attached. So it's all coming together. This is the frame we've made. So we've got lots of pocket holes on the bottom, which will obviously be covered, and it's gonna sit somewhere up there, and up there, and against the ceiling. Roughly like that. So we best now work on attaching it. Because these back cabinets don't make much contact with our walls, we're having to rely on securing it into our ceiling. Now, a while back, we did attach some wooden battens to the ribs of the van, so those should be strong enough to hold everything up. We've now got the main bit of the frame secured in on the walls and up on the ceiling, but this back bit does still wobble a little bit. We are thinking of maybe using some glazing sealant in here, we didn't want to put it on beforehand because glazing sealant, if you've ever worked with it, is incredibly sticky and incredibly messy. Um, but it does now mean we've got to figure out how to get it into that gap without making too much mess. Any top tips for the viewers struggling to reuse um, their glazing sealant? Just don't bother, buy more glazing sealant. It's a nightmare. And this is the new approach when I'm too slow at bringing her a screwdriver. 
what's that quote? Something. Adapt. Improvise. Overcome. Adapt. That's survive. Alright. I've managed to get, hopefully, the glazing sealant open. Um, I ended up taking a super long screw, screwing it into the end, nice and tight, and then clamping the screw in here and basically yanking <laughs> the thing off. Uh, it wasn't easy, but uh, it's done the job. So now, hopefully, that's wet glazing sealant in there that we can use. For these back door profiles in the corners, we're going to use the trusty contour gauge. So we'll just line that up over there. Like so, and then we'll go draw around that on our piece of wood, cut that out, and hopefully everything will fit perfectly. Alex has cut a curved piece to finish off the top nicely and we're just attaching that in. These are the smallest overhead cabinets we've done and that just makes the angles even more difficult but we managed in the end. We've been countersinking all of our screws for the overhead cabinets so that we can go over and wood fill those screws and you won't be able to see them. Okay we've just put in a USB socket under here so that we can charge our phones and we're going to build a little shelf down here. But I have one question for the manufacturers. Why do they feel the need to either put a voltmeter on literally everything or have lights on? Gonna have to tape it up. It's the only option. You can probably see behind me we've managed to get some doors fitted to the overhead cabinets above the bed area after quite a long battle with the hinges. So now while Aisha is going to put the handles on them, I'm going to cut the backing pieces and some dividers. We're going to cut a final piece to finish off the back of the cabinets and then attach that into place. And then we'll be done. And here are our finished cabinets. Please excuse the masking tape. We're in the process of painting them. Not everything is finished off quite yet, as you can see, but the main build is done. It's all just painting and trimming left to do. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next Thursday for another video. First, and then we'll do then we'll do I was going to start making the overhead cab there, there, there. cupboards, cabinets, which one to choose?